Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. The Untitled Horror Movie is a comedy about making a horror movie and is from the director who brought you 2017's Truth or Dare, Nick Simon. It all started when Luke Baines, who worked with Nick on The Girl in the Photographs, called to ask him if he wanted to write a horror screenplay with him in the early days of the lockdown. Nick immediately said yes. His first thought was that we should not only write the script, but also figure out a way to do it uh, to make it ourselves at the same time. The story is when six co-stars learn that their hit TV show is about to be cancel, canceled, they decide to shoot the, their own movie. After all, how hard can it be? Stuck for a plot, they unintentionally summon a demonic spirit with an affinity for violence that starts picking them off one vapid actor at a time. The film was completely made during lockdown without any actor or Nick ever meeting. Each actor set up his own lights, did their own makeup, ran their own cameras. Crazy. The Untitled Horror Movie will have its worldwide live stream premiere on Saturday, June 12th, and will be available to everyone on June 15th, digital and video on demand. I am so looking forward to speaking to this talented crew behind this very funny and creative film. Please welcome to the locker room, Luke Baines, who not only starred as one of the co-writers, Nick Simon, the director and co-writer, and Don Money, the editor of the film. Nick, Luke. Hello. Don. Hello. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, so Luke, I want to start with you. You know, take us back to that phone call. But, but actually, before the phone call, where did the idea ruminate in your head? You know, it's funny. Um, I actually, I don't even think Nick and I had talked about this until a couple of days ago when we were doing some interviews and someone had asked. And I had been at Gelson's at a, at a supermarket in Los Angeles and um, I had seen this woman and she had pulled out her pendulum and she was using a pendulum to decide what sort of bread she wanted to buy. Oh <laughs> um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, 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 you know, look, each to their own. Make it, make it work however you make it work. I am the most indecisive person in the world, so, you know, maybe I need a pendulum. But I saw that and I thought, huh, that's really cool. Um, and then I thought, what would happen if, like, a spirit was actually, like, I because my, my mind all, always goes to, like, the mischievous. So I was like, what if it was, like, a ghost on the opposite side of that that was pushing it? Like, you know, like her ex-husband or something, just, like, you know, messing with her. Buy the uh, most expensive bread. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to do at Gelson's, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, long story short, I called Nick and I said, I've got an idea for a horror film about a possessed pendulum. Let's do it. And he was like, okay, uh -huh, let me think about that. Um, and then he came back and was like, let's do something, but let's make it let's let's do it right now Let, like let's figure out how to do this right now and so the idea morphed from from being about a possessed pendulum to about a bunch of actors who are making a movie about a possessed pendulum <laughs> well, I, I do love that it you know it is about actors uh, uh, you know what knocking off one vapid actor at a time but um nick i know you grew up loving horror which i want to get to but um what did you think of the idea? What you know? What made you say let's do it now? Were you just looking to to be creative during the pandemic? Yeah, I think. Well, it started so Luke called and said, "Hey, I have this idea. I, I think about like a horror film, you know, regarding about the pendulum." And we, you know, we kind of laid it all out, and it, which is kind of a scene in the movie, weirdly enough, um, where Tim kind of explains his idea for the movie. Um, and I think that the the uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it just everything happened so quickly, right? I mean, everything just snowballed, and and we wrote it very quickly. And I said, yeah, we should do it now. And I think it was just because I I uh, I thought if we're gonna do this, we have. Oh, it was also that we kept on looking at Instagrams from other actors that we knew, actors that Luke and I knew, and we're like, um, we gotta help some of these guys because they. I feel like we can get you know help them out. Like they feel, I feel like they need a they need an audience here because. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're doing and these actors are just doing things, so that we could probably cast this. You know, um, we'd probably get a good cast, and we we uh, at one point we talked about doing like a full improv thing and just seeing how it went, and then um, we started calling some actors to see if they'd be interested, and they would. Uh, they were all kind of like, "Yeah, that sounds great," but we need to see a script. So then we actually sat down and wrote a very terrible script at first, and then it got better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Luke, I, John, I'll get. I have a 
question for you in a second, but Luke, had you written before? I have. Um, I have. I've been. I always wanted to write. I like growing up. I, I I loved writing, but my English teachers at school told me I wasn't smart enough to be a writer. Um, <laughs> remains to be seen whether that's true or not. But uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, I have had been writing the entire time I've been in Los Angeles in terms of like different scripts and things like that. Um, and uh, you know, you get the same, well, not the same sort of notes, but I, I definitely kept getting you know a certain familiar uh, red thread through a lot of the the feedback I was getting on a lot of the scripts, which was like, it's cool. It's a little bit out there. Like you kind of need to rein it in a little bit. Like what, <laughs> like what, you know, it's funny, but like, well, let's, you know, make it in the real world. Um, and so I hadn't really co-written with anyone before. Um, and I, I, you know, when I had this idea, I just was like, who is going to make this like a proper end to end conceptualized film like who gets cinema in that way and i obviously i've worked with nick twice so we did we did uh go in the photographs and then truth or dare together um and uh you know we just we work so well together in the way that he is not afraid to tell me my ideas are terrible and i am not afraid to tell him his ideas are terrible um, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> it's kind of true. what this is totally true but in all fairness i knew you could write because you sent me a script that you had written a while ago. Because he, I've always wanted to do a comedy, and Luke has known that. So, like, he sent me a script that he wrote a while ago, um, and I and I said, "Hey, can I re can I do a pass on this and do a rewrite on it?" And you're like, "Yeah, I don't care. It's just sitting there." So I and that and that script was very funny. And there's some really really great stuff in it. And I, I just I think I just did some structural things to it, which I don't think he ever read after I sent it back to him. But. No, I <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, well, I did a pass. What do you think? And he never got back to me. So yeah, um, anyway, no, um, but, <laughs> but what what I did notice about that was, you know, I think when when you come into filmmaking from however you come into it, obviously I've come into it from being an actor. I you know really care about what the characters say and who the characters are and what the dialogue is and all that sort of stuff. But there are definite moments that I miss in terms of like you know creating a scary scene or whatever it is and like when you had done that pass on that I remember specifically there was like one thing that you put in and it was already there but you just kind of like rearranged it and made it sound like more cinematic and and so I think that that's why we work really well together yeah that's great Don I mean, do you remember what you thought when when Nick called and had this idea to do to do a movie where you know the actors have to do everything. Yeah, and we actually and, and joked you, about and you, this. And you live with and you live with an actress, so you, so you know what that you know. <laughs> yeah, we've actually joked about this a, a few times. I remember he called me up and was like, "Hey, what are you up to?" And at this point, the movie that I had been working on had stopped, like everything else. Uh, but then also, like my kids' school had stopped as well. So like we were literally in the middle of the very beginnings where like the teachers hadn't exactly figured everything out. And so like all of a sudden all the kids are home, they have like a one or two zooms in the morning and then a packet of schoolwork that they have to get through for their day. And we also had to like walk them through all of that. So when he first called, I was like, dude, I was like, it sounds awesome. Uh, I don't exactly know how you would pull this off. I was like, and I would love to do it, but I was like, gosh, man, I was like, I don't know if I can. I was like, our house is crazy town right now. For the record, um, John does say every time I ask him to do a project, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> every uh, single project. No, not just during a pandemic. <laughs> not just during the pandemic. It's but everything. as everybody sort of touched on, there was also like the idea that like, I didn't have anything creatively going on at the time. And so I was like, uh, I was like, if it's actually real, let me know and we'll figure it out. And then a couple of days go by, he calls me back. He's like, okay. He's like, so it is real. We are doing it. Uh, we're doing it soon. Kevin Duggan, my DP, who I know from working on many projects together uh, and Luke, you know, as well, he's like, they're figuring out how this is going to work. And I want to loop you in with them uh, to figure out workflow and all this stuff. And he was like, and I'm like, oh, all right, man. And he and, and this is what we joke about. He goes, but don't worry. He was like, once everything is set up, he was like, we're just going to run these long takes 
he was like, and so there's going to be huge chunks of the movie that you'll just be able to drop into the timeline. And he's like, you, this movie will just cut itself. You'll, you'll be able to cut this movie in your for the record, For the record, Don, if it makes you feel any better, we lied to everyone. <laughs> and that could not have We been. lied to everyone. Bravo. Bravo, Nick. Bravo. And, <laughs> and ultimately, that could not have been farther from the truth. Um, but at the end of the day, it was probably the most challenging but also probably my favorite and most creative and most rewarding project that I've ever done. Uh, and like I sent Nick a picture of my timeline when it was done, my, my timeline looks like no other movie that I've ever done before, uh, including movies that I've done with Nick and other people that have 300 to 500 VFX shots in them. And my timeline literally looked like a minefield because there was just so many elements and so many things that was, that was happening to be able to pull off a movie like this that at the end of the day, except for like the movie and movie bits, feels like it's one seamless, long, sequential thing. Well, as a viewer, it seems quite seamless. But for you, knowing that you would be editing, what was your biggest concern that Nick, Luke, and Kevin need to get right with everything you know, coming to you to put it together? Yeah, well, basically, my biggest concern was like, are we sure the actors are going to be able to get the footage off <laughs> of the devices and then get it to me and it all be there? You know, are we certain that we're not going to lose? Like, right. like what's the audio going to sound like? What's the video going to look like? Because when we got onto these zooms to sort of watch it, even though we had an idea of what everybody was going to look like and sound like, we were still getting the feed from whatever device they were zooming on, right? And so whatever the frame was, wasn't exactly what they were recording. And whatever we were hearing wasn't exactly what it was sounding like on whatever their recording device was. And then also like, how are we getting it from everybody? And like, you know, what, like are they shooting in 2K? Are they shooting in 4 It was more of a technical standpoint because typically on sets, as many of the articles have mentioned, you have a team or at least certain people who do all of this and that's all they focus on. So my other concern was like, aside from all of that, like, are they, like they were focused on everything. So it's like, oh, this light and this microphone and oh, my camera and am I on the right side? Oh, wait, what's my line? Oh, I actually have to, hold on a second. I actually, like, I have to act. And like, so I give major props to whatever universe thing oh, yeah. that happened that brought everybody together. Cause it, 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 not every single person that's an actor that also fits the role and looks beautiful and all of this can also do all of these technical things at the same time. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was, it's pretty phenomenal what, what they pulled off. So I, good job, I, Luke. I totally agree. And I have so many questions, but Nick, I I, where did your love of horror start? Oh, that comes from my mom. I have to give her all the credit for that because she uh, <laughs> she has she's she's a, she's obsessed with true crime and serial killers and books like that. And I remember like uh, you know I, I grew up in the eighties, so that's like the prime time for yeah, me too. All, all, all horror <laughs> films, you know. And uh, I remember like my mom had a rule of that if it was on regular TV, we called it back then. If it was edited for TV, then it would be fine for anybody to watch, right? So I remember watching films like. Night of the Living Dead, Halloween, uh, things like that at a very early age, probably earlier than I should have watched and being probably, you know, severely traumatized. Um, but it also helped, you know, lay the groundwork for where I am now, I suppose. So I can't help it. But yeah, uh, which is which is funny. I have I credit it all to my mother who um, she's coming out to visit me tonight, actually. So this would be great. Oh, that's awesome. But a lot of what you've done has been horror. So what what made you want to add comedy to this? I think they're they're cut from the same cloth. I think horror and comedy are both very subjective things. I think that they, um, the best horror movies have elements of comedy in them. Uh, I think if you have those moments where you can like let like you know breathe and let you know maybe laugh and then it's you scare somebody again with it. You know, it just it just gives you like an emotional roller coaster. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of similarities between horror and comedy and. Um, I think that they uh, they they worked I, to me. My favorite movies of all time are when they cross the genre. You know, I think mm -hmm. I think um, you know Wes 
Craven was a mentor of mine earlier. Um, he's, he's, you know, Scream is obviously the best example of that. But even if you watch like People Under the Stairs is really a funny movie, you know, and it's just, it's, there's this elements to his humor. And he had a really, and Luke knew this too, he had a really um, dry sense of humor also. And you can see that, I think, in all of his films, if you really you would watch them. Yeah, I mean, crazy. Nick, uh, sorry, Luke, what, what did you underestimate as thinking Everything. that you <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> Everything. That, that, you, you read my mind. <laughs> as what or how hard this would be for each individual actor to do and yourself yeah you know there was a lot of internal panic and anxiety that i was having leading up to us shooting because i had gone through round after round of like tech tests with our DP and and with Don and Nick and showing them everything and trying different kind of mics, how we were going to mic everyone, you know, and trying to figure out the the best way to get the, you know, best audio, for instance, the cleanest audio, um, but also making it as simple as possible. Because at one point we had lavalier microphones, you know, that you, what do you yeah. call it? What's that? Yeah. What's the word called? Yeah, take, just uh, hang. Take, yeah, take hang <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we had that and it gave a, you know, superior sound, but I was like, guys, we're not going to be able, this is too much, you know, like, no, absolutely not. I was kind of like the gatekeeper for the actors where it was like this, I think we, I can get them to do this. Absolutely not. And that's just based on the fact that most of the people in the movie are my friends and I kind of know them, you know, pretty well. Um, Claire was one of the only people that we sent someone to her house to get the footage from her phone. Everybody else uploaded it themselves and she uploaded some of it, but we, there were days where, because she was six months pregnant and she would have to be up until, you know, two or three in the morning while we're all shooting. That was like, that was where I, as a friend was like, absolutely not. We're sending someone to a house. Someone's picking up. I didn't up. realize from watching she was pregnant. That's great. <laughs> yeah. She was yeah. And, and, and in Miami. So she was three hours ahead yeah. of us here. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But, um, you know, in terms of kind of, you know, as Nick said, we, we did definitely lie to a lot of people, but it was also... <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the first time I did, I genuinely believed my lie. So I don't know if it's a lie. I just, I remember talking to Emmy, for instance, and being like, okay, so I'm going to send you this script. I, you know, it's, I reckon we could probably get it done in two, your stuff done in two days plus like a couple of hours on a separate day. That's what I told her. Um, and I truly believe that that's what we would, what, that's what we would <laughs> Um, and it's, and then obviously, you know, you get to a point where all the tech finally arrives and I made all these boxes up for everyone and obviously it was COVID. So we, we had to do, you know, contactless, uh, contact free, contactless, same thing, mm -hmm. uh, to everyone. And, um, and I walked up to Emmy's and I had this big box and I was like, Hey, so here's all the stuff you're going to need. And she was like, what, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Yes to saying yes to doing this movie, right? And she was like, "No, no, yeah, I can't wait." What? Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's interesting because right? going back to what Don was saying about the editing, I, you know, so many people did, you know, so much work, and um, you know, because obviously we had to kind of do filmmaking in a very different way. But Don's job by far, I think, was the hardest because getting getting a seamless movie out of everything that we shot. And getting a seamless movie out of the fact that we, you know, couldn't be in the same room and all the all the crazy limitations that we had, but then actually getting a cohesive film that like plays and it has, you know, moments of suspense, it has moments of comedy and whatever else. Yeah. I, and I, I have it that has is, everything. It really. Yeah. I was like I said, it was seamless. It, I mean, funny. I mean, you really got an incredibly talented group together in front and you know and behind yeah, as well it really did and i think um i you know just when don was talking then and and we were talking about you know get finding the right people i think i have i've have obviously just surrounded myself with smart actor friends <laughs> the ones who aren't are the ones who are essentially written about in the movie <laughs> you know what i mean like 
I kept all the I kept all the good ones. The ones that I threw back into the ocean were the um, were the ones that definitely can't you know light themselves or, <laughs> or just. Uh oh! Oh no, he lost. We lost him. Oh, Luke, you're frozen. Come back. Well, he come back. can it, he can sign back in. I was going to ask. So, are all of the actors friends of Luke's? Is that truly how you found them? He does know them all. Yeah, they, uh, they, and funny enough, they don't know each other, um, most of them. So, like, he does know uh, all of them to some to, 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 yeah, he's the connection between all of them. I know, I think I introduced Luke to Tim because I've known Tim for a long time, Granaderos, and then uh, I met Kat and Luke both at the same time. Right. Yeah. You, you were, you had cast Nick, uh, Luke in the girl with the photographs. And Kat was supposed to do that as well, but then yes. she got stuck doing Shadow Hunters where they yeah. met, right? Yeah, I think she got stuck doing Shadow Hunters. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Stuck. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. On a, on a very successful <laughs> show. Yeah. Like five years, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, so then... Uh, uh, well, so that, Cal, right, and Cal was in... Girl Cal was in Wonderful Earth. I and knew that's, Cal. And that's how yeah, Cal yeah. shows up at the beginning yeah. of yeah. Untitled Harmony. Yeah, so Luke and I both called Cal, and then Luke knew Aisha from something, um, a, like a convention or something. But like, like Emmy has not met. Um, she met Cat after we shot the movie, and she right. can probably wow. tell you about that later. But like, um, I know uh, I've never met Emmy. Still, I've never met Claire. Still, um, which, which as a director, doesn't that yeah. sound insane? It is. I still haven't met because uh, I've never. Met, I haven't met Darren. I, I have not met Darren, Emmy, or Claire. I think that's it. Hey, he is. <laughs> hey he's back. He's back. It was a guy. Uh, guys. So go. <laughs> I talk about that. Yeah. I, I was talking. I mean, because you 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 said like everybody, Luke was was your friend, um, and and we were talking at the beginning of this about you know Don hearing about this for the first time. Nick, I mean, do you have a distinct? Uh, recollection of one of the phone calls with the actors you called and them telling you you, you were out of your mind? <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, I think like to, to my funniest phone call was definitely with Claire because Claire and I have known each other for the better part of, you know, 15 years and like really grew up together. Um, and she has been as, as in, in my personal life has been such a champion of me as a writer. Like she has read every single script I've ever written and and has always really pushed me to to write more and, and really like supported me in that, like really as a friend um, kind of supported me in that. And so I called her and was like, hey, so, you know, the proof's in the pudding. <laughs> you, you think I'm a great writer, right? <laughs> I was like, cool. So you want to do a movie I wrote? And she was like, I mean, yeah. Like, And I was like, we're going to shoot it now. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, we're shooting it right now. Like everyone, I'm going to send cameras to tomorrow. Yeah. Like next like week. A week. Um, and she was like, okay, let me read the script. She read the script within two hours, called me back and was like, I'm in, I love it. She was like, this, she's like, this is so good. I would audition for it. I was like, well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying you anything. And, <laughs> um, was like, you know, let's do it. And she goes, okay, but I am worried about how we're going to shoot ourselves. I was like, no, so am I. Um, <laughs> if it's, I was like, if it's not good, I'll never release it. Like I would, I'm not going to do that to you. You know, I'm not going to have footage of you out there that you you look like a crazy person who can't act. And she was like, "Okay, thanks." Um, and then, of course, the wheels started turning more in in terms of how the production went. And because we started getting all these, you know, amazing talent to to join the movie, then we started being able to get a little bit more money to get better cameras to get, you know. Yeah like all the other sort of things that happen, you know, when the ball kind of gets rolling. And then it got to a point where I was like, well, if the movie's crap, it's still coming out because now we have money. We have to. Yeah, yeah, we had to at that point. Yeah. You and, really did have a talented group. I mean, I, I, I knew everybody. I knew Claire. I absolutely knew. I was a big fan of the originals and she was phenomenal in that show. So good. Um, yeah. So good in that show. But, uh, you know, everybody, just even, you know, some people who are newer, but they're all just so so good a, a typical shoot are you all in the same zoom before you start recording can you 
both you yeah. know, anybody walk me through nick yeah Dom. We do, what we do is we would start um so we, everybody has all their own equipment and they had all their mics and their lights set up yeah so what what actually can you explain what everybody yeah. had so say? all the actors had we sent them cameras um and uh microphones and a few different lights right i mean different lights for different situations and then like um, tripods and gaff tape tripods and tape and i mean everything whiteboard bounce boards i mean everything it was a little micro i mean it's a micro but the box is you know how do, who like, um was it kevin yourself nick don who who you know made the lists of everything you needed kevin and well kevin really i mean that's all kevin really he came up with the list of all the equipment that we needed because he knew what we how the the easiest i mean the, the way to do it that we could send things to. And then Kevin and Luke did a lot of camera tests. You guys ch tested a lot of different cameras. You guys tested a lot of different lights. You guys did, I remember just days of the, that. I mean, we, I did more camera tests on this movie than we have on anything I've ever done before um, to get it right. Um, and it wasn't just about like the, the sense of what camera would work the best. It was also what camera will work um, that we knew that the uh, actors would be able to figure out the easiest or not mm -hmm. necessarily that, but like who, the ones that were easier to use versus, you know, there's a lot of things like that. And then basically I would say probably, you know, if we had, a, we shot 12 hour days. Um, so I would say, uh, what do you think, Luke, a couple hours on top of each day, we'd be setting up equipment. Yeah. So we would have, so basically the way oh, on a zoom, right? Pardon? Kevin would get on the Zoom first. Yeah, we'd all, on, that, right? we'd all get on a Zoom. That's how we'd end up doing the scenes live. And we'd all so basically talk to each other as like on a Zoom. But we never recorded anything on the Zoom. We just yeah. use, you would use the platform as a way to communicate with each other. And that's how Kevin would look at, like right now, Kevin would look at Luke and say, okay, you have a window open to your left. Can you shut that? And, you know, so it was wow. just that kind of thing. Yeah, so and that's how we would do it. So in terms of like our um, our first AD who was scheduling everything, we would have people come in anywhere between like forty five minutes to fifteen minutes before the shoot time, so that Kevin could sit on there on Zoom with them and do exactly that. Go for a walkthrough. I mean, we'd already done walkthroughs of everybody's homes, and we had put together a list of how many outfits they would need, and and Nick had approved them. We you know we'd had kind of tech days where we went through everyone's house and kind of figured out what each character would be wearing and where they would be and all that sort of stuff. And then on the day it would be you know because obviously the light changes, so Kevin would have to relight things or we would have to, you know, the the amount of times I remember once Kevin was like, okay, so I need everyone to go and get the thickest blanket they can find, and we were like, what? And he's like, we're doing day for night. I was like, no, we're not. No. No, we're not. No, we're not. And he's like, yeah, we are. We are. We're gaff taping. We're, we're gaff taping that window. Do it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was interesting. Um, it was like very interesting because those are all elements of movie making I don't know anything about. You know, it's like you normally turn up, but if I, you know, you're talking oh, yeah, about. Yeah, of course. As the, yeah, right. The <laughs> of the That's not something you normally have to learn for yourself. No, no, but I tell you what, I am now, I have, I've been turned into a monster because I just did a film and I was standing there and I was like, oh, you're going to go with a 4,200. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> I would have done 30, but like, whatever, you know. <laughs> so, so am I when the actors are supposedly seeing each other, are they really seeing each other? Sometimes when it's a Zoom call, yes. But when it was anything on FaceTime, no. So that was really tricky. So like the, the there's an incredible cameo from Cal Penn, who Nick and I have worked yeah. with. And I'm such a huge fan of his. And um, we couldn't see each other. So I, it's like you're giving reactions based on what you can hear. We all had um, like... IFPs. Yeah. Yeah, we had a flesh in your piece. Or we had um, you know, AirPods on. So sometimes we would use the the, the earpieces as part of the scene. Other times the girls a lot, uh, would often have like a, a flesh colored earpiece in their ear that they could hide. Um, and so that when the audio came to me as well, it was all separate from each other. So I was never married to a take because even if everybody was like, oh my god, whatever on top of each other, I had separate audio feeds from anybody so I could move things around and make it clean and understanding and everything, no matter how I wanted to. Which and is why that makes the film is funny too, right? I mean, it really yeah. can time every joke perfectly that way. And that was one of the, one of our biggest problems that Kevin and I had during the, the tech 
trial run of it was, um, you know, trying to make sure that we could do that. We could have completely separate feeds. Nick really wanted it to be in 4K, which was something that I, for me, I have no idea about. I still, I mean, I, I know what it is, but I don't. <laughs> I actually feel like, honestly, I want to go back to where everyone was, you know, filtered and, and milky back in the. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want any more definition, but like, whatever. You're, you're, you're probably too young to remember, but the Sybil Shepherd moonlighting, uh, she, you know, everyone used to talk about her gauze. Yeah, yeah. I want that. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a Mariah Carey filter. You know, I want to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> So, so what were some of the, the, I guess, bloopers or some of the biggest challenges once you actually started? Well, I think where uh, my favorite, my favorite bloopers are was the, um, it was in our, it was in our rap party video. We had a, we had a Zoom rap party too, because that's, eventually we'll have a real one. I think when everybody happens to be in LA at the same time. Um, the uh, the actor, you know, just to, to, every day we'd start. Okay, we're gonna do a take, so we could see each other. If we were just doing like a those six, say on camera talking to each other, roll your cameras. We'd roll your cameras, roll your audio. They'd roll your audio. Now we would basically do a countdown and we clap themselves in. So there's moments where you had to actually clap in front of your face to uh, so it sync the sound. Gotcha. Um, so they didn't have their own clapboards. They no, just they didn't. Have their own they did. We'd actually, we'd actually <laughs> clap like. This is a homemade movie in the purest of sense. It's, it's the greatest thing I've ever ever had to deal with, and and uh, it's one of the most interesting experiences I've had uh, for sure. It reminded me of uh, things I did and and like you know when I started making movies, like as in like high school or early filmmaking. You know, just this is like like we had to figure out everything and how to do it. But um, the bloopers were really, I think, really funny because sometimes they would forget to clap until the last second. They'd be like, "Cool," and like, "Ready," and then Kevin would be like, three, two, and they'd be like, "Oh," and then they start rolling their cameras. And, you know, <laughs> There's a bunch of and, that are really funny. and the idea for the clap too. So that's my sync point when I'm syncing the audio to the video. So I go to the frame when their hands touch, and then I hear the pop, and that's how I can sync the audio. But trying to get them to do it roughly at the same time was also so that I could lay them all in. So that if I wanted to have a gallery slash grid view, and I wanted to stay on the same take, that I had everybody's proper reactions to what it was they were reacting to at the time that then Nick and I would like move around and do whatever we wanted to later. But it's also how we were able, because I got everything independent and uh, we recorded some of the zoom sessions, but not all of them. So it's not like I had a master to look at, to know, Oh, this, this, and Oh, his reaction going, ah, it was to this thing. And like, cause it was, so that was also my sync point from a technical standpoint of like making a master or a wide as we called it. Yeah. Well, um, gentlemen, uh, your your lovely co-star, Catherine McNamara, has joined us. Please welcome to Yay. the locker room. Yay. The locker room. Hey. Take one, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like, Take one. <laughs> I am amazed. Bravo, <laughs> Catherine. You really... Uh, all of you, I mean, I, I said to Luke, all the actors, but you really, because because the, the sort of, uh, not to give stuff away, but the emotional, you know, roller coaster that your character goes through, just really phenomenal job. Well, thank you very much. I mean, a lot of the credit for that goes to Nick and Luke for giving me the chance to do that. And that's that's honestly the fun of a project like this is that because I've known Nick and Luke for so long, they know that I haven't had the chance to play a character like Chrissy in a really long time, if ever, nor have I had a chance to do comedy in a really long time, which is something that I love to do. But also equally, they know I will commit to throwing myself across my house or me crying and really did. Papers, yeah. that's, yeah. you know, that's what you do. Well, everybody did. Everybody committed to throwing themselves. Yeah. So, um, you know, Nick and, and Luke can't really um, say otherwise since it is their film. But what did you think when, when they called with this idea? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm the daughter of a scientist, so I'm always down for an experiment. Um, but you know, when it comes to all these things, I think all of us were so starved for any kind of not only social interaction, but some kind of creative productivity at the time. And we just needed something. Also, the script was so great. We, we thought, why not? Let's just see. That's what we do as artists. We overcome obstacles and we make it work no matter what situation we're given. And uh, I think the magic of the film really is that everyone was on the same page and just willing to dive in wholeheartedly into this process. I, I, you, you know, I think that is one thing that truly comes across when you watch it, how, how committed everybody really, really is. Um, now, real quick, but you were talking about yeah. bloopers and how, how, how some of the bloopers are. So when we, you know, at the end credits, we have a, you know, like a smoking the bandit style blooper reel going up at the same time the credits were. And let me just tell you how much of a professional cat is. Cat McNamara had <laughs> no bloopers. She met, no, you have no bloopers. Ask Don. Like we struggle right. to find any anything. Like you never break character. You were like there's a couple. There was two moments where you would laugh at something, but like that was it. You have zero bloopers. It's That's amazing. Cool. Wow. No, it is I amazing. Don't, and so I don't think consistent. I recall a single line flub from you, Cat. Right. I don't think there was one. I was blown yeah. away. She what my one of my favorite Cat McNamara stories is that <laughs> I've I've known her for ages before we'd worked on Shadowhunters together. Wait, but you met. On auditioning for Nick's film, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah in, the, we did. in the photographs, in the waiting room in the waiting room for I. Um, I'll let Kat tell that story, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I know that one too. Yeah, um, but <laughs> basically, we were doing this this scene in in the apartment on on Shadow Hunters, and it's like a three part dosi do. Basically, it starts out us facing each other. I go here, she comes here. I go here, she like it was the, the most elaborate scene ever. Um, but they had gone from, you know, the, the extreme wide to the close-ups and they hadn't blocked for camera. So we went and started to do this do -si do And as Kat comes and swings around, there's a camera in her place. Doesn't even, like, her, she didn't even blink. I don't even, like, I don't know how it was possible, but she just completely did it, refound her light and the, and the camera in, like, this, like, a split second and, like, delivered her line. And I was the one who messed it up, and I wasn't a great camera because. I... <laughs> Wait, what's happening? I remember that. Yeah, I, remember, I had this slight moment of panic in in the back of my head, but that, I turned around, and my back was facing the camera, and I turned around, and Luke was supposed to be there, but instead a camera was there, and I went, "Oh, let's adjust." But this is the beauty <laughs> of doing a show. I mean, this was our third season, the end of our third season of Shadowhunters, and we had had the same crew for most of the show. And so we were so used to kind of doing that dance. And this was, it was Glenn, I think, that was operating the camera mm -hmm. who did my first and last shot and so many in between on our show. And I just remember I, I got so used to just finding that that place. And I knew exactly where on Glenn's camera I could look to be an <laughs> island person. And I just did it. And I went, well, I don't know if that was the right island or not, but at least it's something. We didn't lose a tick. I don't know. And I'm just standing on the other side being like, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it was your first day. It, it, was my, it was my actual first day on the show. Yeah. Was great. Oh, wow. So what do you remember about meeting him in the waiting room? <laughs> well, this was, and I'm still so good at I was supposed to do this movie with these two, but ironically, Shadow Hunters and Maze Runner, both scheduling-wise, got in the way. But I, uh, I remember I was sitting in the audition room, and obviously Girl in the Photographs was a very intense film, and so I was super <laughs> focused. And there were a bunch of people in there. Nick was, you know, Nick wasn't even, he was in the room, I think, seeing someone else. Yeah. And I'm sitting in my corner, and I'm focused, I'm doing my thing, and this guy walks in and sits across from me and kind of looks at me and goes, Oi. I look up, I'm like, hi. And he goes, have you read the script? Or I said, well, I read the script. And he goes, so what happens? In the end, <laughs> going, um, well, no. And I kind of tell him, I don't want to ruin the movie. We'll have it today, although they should. It's fine. Um, <laughs> no, you should see Girl in the Footgrass. It's great. But it's, uh, it, it just puzzled me. But, you know, ever since then, Luke and I have been great friends. And um, I'm just so happy to have both these guys in my life. But um, Luke had a very good reason for asking that question. And I'll let Luke tell that. I was such a huge fan of Wes Craven growing up that 
when the audition came through and I saw that it was the executive produced by Wes Craven, I was like, oh, well, I, I can't. Like, I no, I'm going to, if I invest in this movie, I'm going to want it too much and just completely blow the audition. And then I got the call back to have the director session and I thought, well, I shouldn't like mess with a good thing. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, well, if it was good enough to get the director session, then if I read the script now, then I'm going to get in my head even more. And then I got to the audition and I saw Kat there and she was sitting like a true ballerina. Like she was like <laughs> sitting in the corner. She had like her hair was just like curled to perfection. And she had her like crisp lines, I think, in her in front of her. No, I don't think you had the lines. I think you're reading a book maybe or something. I, I think you were like so prepared. You didn't even have lines with you. And I was like, okay, she knows what's going on. That's um, a professional. <laughs> and in, what I thought in my head was, she can tell me what happened so I can make the right choices as an actor, but I'm not going to get invested by reading it and thinking it's a cool script. And it was a win-win. There you go. Happy to help. Yeah, you tell me. Happy to help. Now, <laughs> do you normally uh, come out of auditions with making friends, both of you? It depends. I think it takes a very special person to, especially at that point, I don't know, I, I tend to be in one of two modes. I'm either super focused where I just stay in my corner and don't really talk to anyone or I'm trying to get out of my head and I'm just chit chatting with everyone but it kind of yeah. depends on the mood of the room it depends on the office I miss auditioning so much now yeah right <laughs> you do it this way person. In yeah. Person, yeah yeah it's crazy it's so different it's Although, so different. yeah because of Untitled Horror Movie, I know how to light my self-tapes. And <laughs> <laughs> Your self-tapes look amazing, I'm sure. I was just going to say, they must be a step up now. I lit a full-on strobe light house party scene in the self-tape the other day. Oh. The lights cool. that I have from Untitled Horror Movie. Good one. That is phenomenal. Nick, earlier you said that Wes Craven was your mentor. Mm -hmm. I mean, loving Wes, just like Nick just, uh, sorry, that Luke just said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so was, for both of so both of you, what was it like to work with him? Uh, I mean, I, I was. I mean, I never. I'll never forget the first day when I found out that Wes was going to be my mentor. I ended up going to uh, uh, his house for dinner uh, through the it was through the Writers Guild. So I remember like getting the email saying you're going to have dinner at his house, and there was like five of us um, in the in the in the group. Uh, and I remember just like I, I happened to be the first one there, and I have no idea why but I, and i just knocked on the door and he answered and it was like i just did not know what to say i just sounded like a total you know idiot um i'm sure it was sort of the same because I, I i did surprise everybody on girl in the photographs where he came to the table read do you remember that luke and i'm sure i didn't tell anybody he was going to be there because i didn't how want anybody to be how could i forget because i yeah. was like i was late i was late to the table read but with <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it. I forgot you were late. That's amazing. I was, uh, I was, it wasn't even that. I was like three minutes late, but everyone was there. And and it like it was one of those things where I I'd gotten out of my Uber. It was we had the table read AFI and I had never yeah. been there before. And it's like kind of a maze to find. Anyway, I finally up the hill. Yeah, up the hill. And you, I finally and it's I walk in and I'm like, so quiet in here what's happening I'm kind of walking around and then I like open the door and I walk in and the first person I saw was Wes Craven and I was like oh. <laughs> also I was desperate to go to the toilet but I was, like, <laughs> I was like, so badly oh, I was like, I'm not I can't now walk into this room and be like oh excuse me Wes Craven could you please wait while I go and use the like use the toilet um and also Cal Penn was in there and like uh, you know Nick and I'm like every I'm like looking around the room like oh gosh no I'm getting fired before it's even begun um <laughs> what, I, what I do remember about that which was I think like a, it was one of those moments that you obviously remember because that was the last time I, I saw Wes, but um, the first and last time I saw him. Um, I, I wish I had fangirled more, but I didn't. Um, but he had said when we were starting, he goes, if anyone ever tells you you're doing a good movie, they're lying because no one knows. He was like, it can change so quickly. He was like, you know, you can have the best script and the best writer and the best DP and the best director and the best this. He's like, but it can all fall apart at any stage of the process. He was like, this one, he was like, it's a great script great cast he's like this i mean he had said he had said that this is one of his favorite scripts that he had ever been a part of 
And he was like, well, I'm so excited to see, you know, where this is going to go. He's like, but I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a good movie because no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, no, he, he's totally right. How does that make you feel? Uh, he's 100 percent right. I mean, there's a, there's a, I mean, look, any, any, any. No, um, but I mean, the, the, about the the film. Yeah, I mean, he. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, it was amazing to hear him say that. I mean, I was one of the three writers on that movie, but it was, it was. Uh, he was, he was such a, he was so supportive of that project, you know. And again, I, I, he, I met him as a, he was my mentor through the Writers Guild, um, and then as the year was winding down, he was talking to everybody about projects they've been working on. I, I had mentioned to him at one, we had dinner at his house like four or five times that throughout that year. Um, and I got to know him and his wife pretty well during that time. And uh, I was just talking to him and said, Oh, you know, I have this project. And I think at that time I'd been right. I've been working on it for like four or five years. I mean, it's, it was a really tough script to break. It was just something we kept on going back to. I'd done a couple of the movies in between. Um, I said, I have this thing, but I don't know if it's good. It's weird. He's like, well, send it over. I'll read it. I'm like, okay. Cause you can't, you know, you're not supposed to send them, <laughs> you know, send them things. I'm like, okay. So I sent it over to him um, and he read it within like a week, which is also kind of weird. Cause people, you know, it takes, I mean, it takes anybody a year to read anything usually. Um, and he read it in like a week and he, he just called back and he emailed me right away and said, this, this script is really terrific. Um, he's like, let me know what you need me if I could help you in any way. Um, and I was like, yeah, wow. Yeah. It'd be amazing if you would help, you know, if you'd come out as a producer and he did. Um, and that, that's when everything kind of just started, you know, going forward and, and moving pretty quickly at that point. That's amazing. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned about the unknown. Cause I think all of us, right. When Nick called, even when we were in it and shooting it, we all knew that there was something really great in here and it was really funny and it was scary and all of this, but like, we still didn't really know even like when we finished it and started sending it out around town we're like is it this yeah yes yeah. no like yeah what, it's so true though because i mean going with back everything to the, of you know comedy and you know comedy and horror is so subjective and it is so weird of like are people going to get it is it too you know hollywood and insular and other jokes you know to inside baseball um, but what's been so interesting for me with, with like early reactions that we've been getting is that, um, you know, people who are outside of the industry who have no connection to Hollywood whatsoever, find it relatable, which I, like I found really confusing. Like I had these uh, like family <laughs> friends of mine um, who are kind of like my two little sisters at 17 or they were at the time. And I, I got them to watch and she's like, this reminds me of drama, like a drama class. And the other one was like, this reminds me of a group project in science. And I was like, cool. So while the jokes are obviously, you know, about these actors, I, I love the fact that people outside of that could kind of relate and, and um, you know, find it funny. Well, something that I realized in retrospect as well is that, you know, even though we don't mention the pandemic at all in the movie, it's still about six people dealing with the unknown and kind of the uncertainty of the future. And in fact, I, it was probably really cathartic for all of us to do in that at that time, we didn't know what the next six hours, let alone six weeks or six months was gonna look like in our world. And you have these characters that are also dealing with the unknown future and what's happening. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to see how that's oddly universally relatable in these times that we're living in. When did you film it? March? May, May, May 30th. Hey. We started writing it in April. It was so quick. It was so crazy quick. Honestly, we Luke called me in the beginning of April. We I said, sure. I think by mid-April, we were writing the first draft. Ten days later, we had a first draft. My wife read it and said it was terrible. Um, <laughs> we, started, we started rewriting it. True story. And, we started rewriting it and she was right. Uh, we started rewriting it <laughs> and uh, it was actually her idea to, to do have Chrissy be kind of the hippy dippy, uh, you know, with the, with the crystals and things like that. That's all Lindsay. She had all that. Thank your wife for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, it really, it really, it really worked so well. Um, and then uh, everything that's, you know, we called Tim and Kat were the first two people we called. Uh, you guys said yes. And then Claire said yes. And everybody we called said yes. And then we're like, we talked to Bronwyn and Marina, the producers that came out. We, we have to bring on real producers because we don't know what we're doing. Um, and far as far as like, we need somebody to 
keep, uh, keep, keep you guys in check. Keep you guys. Yeah, in we check. need people who have produced a movie, and Brian and Cornelius. I mean, Brian and Cornelius and Marina. Uh, they're both fantastic producers, and they know how to do that. Um, and then they were like, you know, I think we're gonna have to find financing because there's, 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 you have a huge cast, and there's, 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 there's things to this movie that are gonna have to be. You know, we have to do things, certain things that are sag and. So then we called a financier that I knew and he said, yes, b- before he even finished reading the script, really, he said, the script is great. Uh, he's like, so you have this cast and this script and you have how much do you need? And it was, wasn't very much money, um, you know, in the grand scheme of what this movie could have cost, you know? Right. Um, and uh, he just said, yeah, where, should I wire the money tomorrow? And we're like, okay. He's like, you have to shoot this now though. Right. Because lock, I mean, once lockdown's over, all these, these actors are going to go back to other sh- big things right and i'm like yeah and at that time we thought lockdown you know would be over True. by like july right yeah i mean we all thought it'd be over by like midsummer we thought we were, oh, yeah we, we were yeah, we worried about that mm-hmm. um so we finished shooting mid june um mm-hmm. last year and then we then the post process was very intense and that was a that was a that was again but it it turned out so good and i couldn't be happier honestly we have no idea um we, we I, all the way through it. We're like, I hope this is. I, I knew we knew. I, everybody can probably attest that we felt that there was an energy involved with this project, and there's too many things kept on lining up and, and working out. That it felt like it was felt like we we're doing something good, and it felt like something was fun. But you still, and still now, we still don't know really. You know. Well, it's one of those that in a normal world you talk about. You know, when you're with your friends over coffee or drink, you go, "Wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? Would it be so lovely if we could just do something with our friends and make it easy and fun and collaborative?" And then throughout the whole process, we're just going, "Wait, this shouldn't work this way," and yet it does somehow. And I, I'm just so thrilled that we were able to to do an experiment and have it pay off in the end. Hopefully, people will. Enjoy it. And I know for me and Nick and I working together, we've worked together so many times, but a lot of the other things we've worked on already had its destination, you know? So we were working with a production, we were working for somebody, right? So we were working for the production company. We were getting notes from the network, from the studio, whatever it is, there's a lot of stakeholders who get to say things and certain levels that you have to navigate in the creative process of like a note that comes in that Nick and I don't get to say no to even if we don't agree with it, or even if we think it's making the movie worse or a mistake or whatever, if right. they're, if they say, do it, you do it. And so I think what was also really awesome about this is Nick and I literally got to get in and just cut the movie. However, we thought it worked and we tried different things. And sometimes we tried things and we'd watch and go, oh, that's terrible. It's and then we'd scrap that, <laughs> you know, and then we tried a different way. And at one point we tried to actually just have it be like a long zoom for all of those. Calls yeah, like where, like we're Zoom, you know, and then yeah, uh, like we're we're just uh, on grid view the whole time, or yeah. we're on speaker view, and then we realized, oh well, if you're on a speaker view kind of scenario, then you lose Cap's Reaction. great reactions yeah. if she's not audible because it wouldn't know to switch to her if she's it's silent. Just a, it's just a and we're like, well, that doesn't whatever. work. And then we had the discussion of like, is this going to? Are we going to see people's backgrounds? Are we concerned of whether they're on a phone? What kind of phone is it? Are we on a laptop? If we're on Chrissy's laptop. Does she have like trinkets on her desktop? What are her files look like? Is she on a Mac? Is she on a PC? They All of these things. things yeah. We got to just try and think and talk and never felt like we were on, you know, some sort of a clock where everybody's like, oh, you got to do all of this and it has to be this way. And oh yeah, we already have an air date or a release date or whatever. And you have to get it done tomorrow. You know, they, I feel like Luke, you know, even Bronwyn, Marina, everybody kind of let Nick and I just play and come up with what we felt like was the best version of this thing and just let us, let us do that. And it was, I've never had that happen in my career. So and this, this is also the first film I've had the, uh, cause again, I work, you know, we work in tight schedules or low budgets or whatever. This is the first film that I've had a chance to take the cut, look at the, the, the cut where we were at with it and kind of go, okay, I really, and this is something that's a luxury to so many filmmakers that I, I've always been envious of. I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that. Cause there's always moments you want to change and tweak things later. We're like, I wish I had that where this film, because everybody still kept all their equipment and they were living in their own sets. We could just say, oh, Hey, um, you know, it'd be great <laughs> if I could get one additional shot. So we ended up doing a couple pickup shots that would just like help the story a little bit more. And then we can do that with this movie, which, you know, you always want those. Yeah. Moments. It, it, it's not as costly if you don't have to put a setup. 
Yeah, you, have, you guys live in your sets, so yeah. can I get right one now. more out of this? Yeah, for sure. Pat, have, have you seen with, the movie? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Pat, have you seen the movie? I saw a cut. I'm not sure if I've seen the final cut, but I've seen a version of it, and I thought it was so fun. And I think you know the the biggest takeaway from this film is no matter how you come at it, where you, whether you see it as a horror film or see it as a comedy, you can't help but have fun while watching it. And it really is an escape. And I think, every, you know, I, I can speak for everyone and say that that was our intention. We didn't want to mention the pandemic. We didn't want anything heavy. We just wanted to have fun and we wanted to do something creative. And I, I think we accomplished that. I, I totally agree. I had a, so much fun watching it. Um, can you talk about what Kevin Dugan meant to you during this? <laughs> Kevin was everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> he has the patience of a saint. Mm. He took six actors who I think Luke can attest to this. All of us were petrified. We were going to be the ones to ruin the movie on the technical side. Um, and, and just taught us so much and talked us through everything, whether it was three in the afternoon or three in the morning. I mean, you, all, you Luke, I think spent a lot of time with Kevin. Yeah. Prepping it? Or? Yeah, yeah, and he he's genuinely like saintly in the way that he nothing really phases him. He's kind of like, okay, oh, all the lights are overheating right now, and we can't shoot this scene. Okay, well, let's just let the like you know he's like the way his mind works. He's like, okay, mm -hmm, next, you know. Like, <laughs> he's so calm. He's so calm. I, I kept on joking that like I want Kevin to talk to my parents when they can't figure out their computer. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, maybe like, cause like, I had to attach an email. Of a saint. It's you so much that. easier. Yeah, yeah honestly. And, and it really was because also when Kevin and I started doing tech trials on this, it was, you know, uh, Tim, I think Tim Granaderos had an iPhone 6. And so it's like, you know, trying to download anything on that. Um, my laptop was from 2011. And so Ooh. I I couldn't even <laughs> download the latest version of Zoom. And he was like, hey, "Like, what are we doing?" <laughs> you know, like, Remind me, was the whole thing shot on an iPhone? Yeah, 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 yeah right. Because that's yeah. what I saw online, yeah. which Every again time. is phenomenal. Yeah, that, and, I mean that's yeah. really Apple yeah. should be paying for most of this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they really <laughs> should because when you look at the film, you would never ever, you know. And I think I said it to Don. I mean, um, you know, I see all those commercials about, "Hey, this was shot on an iPhone." But to watch a full length movie, yeah. I, you know, it, it, it really was something else. You could, you know, you I, could I not. Really, yeah, I think what's really cool about it is that, we, you know, we have, you know, a roadmap now of, of how to do this. And I think it's really cool for, for young people who are coming up. And, you know, kind of the way that um, the Blair Witch Project made me steal my dad's video camera when I was, you know, 12 or whatever it was when that totally. came out and make a movie. Um, you know, I think it's really cool that that we can we have the technology to be able to make a movie now, and like really in, with something that's in your pocket. And obviously, there are a lot of professionals involved that you know had Cat and I just made it, it probably wouldn't have looked as good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure but, is. I, mean, I think it's really, I think it's really encouraging and inspiring for young people who want to break into the business that they have everything they could possibly need and that at their their fingertips. Well, you all did it at home, so they they certainly do. I mean, you had a little extra help. Kat, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, doing your self-tapes, the lighting. What else, um, what, what's the other takeaway, the biggest takeaway for you that you learned doing this project on your I'm own at home? So much, so many things. Uh, we, some, as someone who wants to direct in the future, mm -hmm. it was a huge learning curve. I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to work on a lot of sets with incredible crews that take time to answer my questions and, and really have taken me under their wing. But there's a huge difference between observing and understanding something and then practically doing it yourself. Um, so I, I learned a ton and my I feel as though the the learning curve was exponential in the things that I took away from it on the technical side, but also it's, I now, you know, have fun with my self tapes with special effects makeup that I have left over and the lighting and <laughs> I'm full, I, I go full out now because I can. Um, but it, it, one thing that it did really highlight for me is we were very lucky in that we had the chemistry that we did and we had the camaraderie that we did on this film, but it made me miss being on set. 
and being in the trenches with everyone and you know being covered in fake blood and the pouring rain at 3 a.m and looking to my side at the camera operator who's huddled in his raincoat somehow wondering how we're having the time of our lives in these circumstances um there's that element is missing and i i I truly, truly am going to appreciate that even more than I already did when I go back to work. And did you know, I know Luke did, did you know the other actors before? I knew a few of them. So I knew Tim and I knew Claire through Luke and uh, that was it. I've met, well, I, I'd met Aisha and Cal before, but I didn't actually get to work with either of them um, on this project. But uh, I, I've met Darren and Emmy since, and, and it's it's such a great group that I think we are well overdue for either a group vacation or a sequel or oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> you've, met, yeah, I look, you've, you've met him. I still haven't met him all. It's so good. I know. That's what's so, so amazing. He, he, hasn't met, he hasn't met him all. Now, uh, Luke, you worked with Nick as a director in person and Kat now via Zoom. Uh, how, what is Nick like as a director? Oh, I'm oh, sorry, it's fine, it's fine. I have been waiting for this question. No, <laughs> I, I wouldn't work with him again if he wasn't good. Um, but, you know, he, he is a very smart director in the way that he, as I said earlier, he obviously has a really great understanding of how to create a cinematic moment. <laughs> Look at her. She's, she's, she's got props at the ready. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That ready. One of those things where uh, they say, you know, to be successful in life, surround yourself by, like, the smartest people you know. And that is obviously what I did in this movie. Um, but it's also not fun when you're the dumbest one because <laughs> then I don't get to do the cool jokes. I'm kidding. Um, the point is with Nick, you know, he, he really does kind of like take a step back and, and let us do our job and then come in and, and give a note that is usually like, he's really good at um, giving a note that isn't directly what you actually need. Like for me, for instance, he knows that I'm a very delicate flower. So if he comes up to me and says, oh, the scene's not working, I'll probably start crying. Um, <laughs> or he'll come in and say, hey, I think you might be drinking in that scene. Like, or, you know, hold that can of Coke while you do the scene. I'm like, okay, why? I don't understand what's going on. And then I'm, you know, forgetting so much about what's happening that the take is completely different in a, in a very different way. Um, and I, I love, I love that kind of, um, I, I love working like that. That's awesome. Hey. I will say too, when you're working with some writer directors, there's not as much flexibility and not as much freedom when you're wanting to play with a moment or or take things further. But what I loved about working with Nick and Luke as well is that they got excited when we extrapolated and when we took our ideas. And because we had six cameras going at any one point, we could do that. And if Darren had a, a funny idea or if I had something funny or if, if you know, we were all like playing off of each other and playing a six handed game of ping pong the entire film, we could do that. <laughs> and they could still have all of the reactions and the, the ad libs and we didn't have to go, oh wait, what did I say on that take when it was somebody else's <laughs> coverage? I don't remember because we had it already. Right. Yeah. I know we're running oh. over. If you're okay on time, I just have a few more. Um, you must have had a blast. Like there, you know, especially, um, there is supernatural elements to the movie. You know, you must have been cracked. There must have been times where you all are doing things on your own, truly making this movie. I'm, here's here's Kat's makeup, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you must have had some really that, that, loud. That thing specifically was really hard to get through because Kat, Oh, sorry, not that scene. That there's another scene where Kat appears with that makeup, and she's like on the screen, and she's like crying. Um, and I have a line where it says something like, um, "Don't overact." Yeah, you need to <laughs> down, right? Yeah, down, stop overacting because we can't understand you. Yeah. And, um, I Kat was as soon as she would come on the screen. So it was also so one of the things that some actors did, some actors didn't. But when there are the the arrivals and exits, a lot of the actors would turn their screen off. So on Zoom, because that's how we would see each other. Um, but they would turn their screen off and then like randomly, you know, join it. So it would feel natural for us to be like, hey, whatever. 
And Kat would do that. She would have her screen off and then she would just pop up and she would be in hysterics within the pigtails with this, you know, eye makeup. And she'd be, <laughs> like, it was beyond hard to get through it. But then, you know, obviously the producer side of my brain is like, we're running out of daylight. We've got to hurry up. We've got to get through this. <laughs> Was was it always your idea to have untitled horror movie as the title? Yes. Yeah. I yeah, never we, thought, we thought for sure somebody was gonna make us change it, but they didn't. We yeah, we kept just saying we kept saying it's the title until someone tells us to change it. And then we did. We had some you know discussions in the earlier part of sales where people were like, Well, this doesn't sound like a finished title or whatever it is. Um, and we just kept pushing back and um because it's I think it's so integral to what the movie is that it kind of makes yeah. sense. It, yeah. it, it, it really is perfect. Um, for Kat and, and Luke, what, what, uh, who or what inspired you to be actors? Ooh. Kat, if you want to go. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, for me, I, I didn't intend to be an actor at first. I wanted to go into developmental economics and just happened to, to I, I know I'm a huge nerd. I just, <laughs> to, well, 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 I am going to interrupt you because let, let's see, do I have this correct? You graduated high school at 14 with honors, graduated summa cum laude with a degree in business with an emphasis in finance from Drexel um, at the age of 17, and currently pursuing a master's of literature at John Hopkins. I, that, yeah. yeah, I've taken a little bit of a sabbatical because work got in the way, but yes, I, that's currently the- I mean, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love that, school. I've, I've always- Good for you. That is, I mean, anybody watching this, you're, you're a successful actress still educating yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's part of why I want to direct eventually as well, because again, it's something new that I can learn and a way to keep expanding and growing. And stagnance to me is, is death in a way. And that's, again, why this film was so refreshing to be able to do, because I've been sitting in my house for months talking to my boxing dummy Bob, trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Um, and it, it was so great to get to dive in. But as far as being inspired to act, I, I really, really took a lot of inspiration from the Kansas City theater community. You know, that's what I, I tried a, a play. I was a dancer in a community theater show when I was like 12 years old or something. And I just knew from the moment I walked on stage, something clicked and I went, oh, I have to tell stories for the rest of my life. And now that I've learned more, whether that's in front of the camera or behind the camera or whatever that ends up being on stage in a recording booth, that's what I wanna do with my life is tell stories. And the Kansas City theater community is just this beautiful microcosm of egoless artists that do it because they love it. And much in the way that we made this movie, they're all in to do whatever job is necessary to get the curtain up at the end of the night. And that is the work ethic I try and take with me moving forward, no matter where I am or what I'm working on. Well said. Luke, for you. Absolutely not following that. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Luke. <laughs> Luke, Luke rolled out of bed one day. Technical, technical Sorry. difficulties. Um, so I, um, I, <laughs> I, I've always wanted to act. I remember watching E.T. when I was like five and saying to my mom, like, I want to do that. Um, and she put me in acting classes. And I also kind of dipped out of acting for a minute. I did a business degree and, and tried to have a real life and a real career um, and fell back into it. I, I met a casting director at a party in London and she was like, what do you do? And I said, I do crisis management for Intel. <laughs> she was like, okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, um, you know, she's like, do you want to come and audition for me? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I'll, I'll do it on a Saturday for you. And I was like, okay. It's like, you know, the, the devil appearing with chocolate, <laughs> come on, eat some. Um, and I, and I went to that first audition and then six months later, um, ended up almost booking this, this job and she got me an agent and then I kind of fell back into it. Um, but again, it's, it's, a, for me, it's also about just telling stories and it's about kind of being able to move people, whether it's either emotionally or make them laugh or make them think about something different or just give them, you know, an escape, like an 87 minute escape. <laughs> and also to get the person to have around during a crisis. I will attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> per perfect background for making this movie. I mean, no, I, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Can roll with good. Budget. Hey, Kat, some of uh, the fans watching were asking, uh, 
which role do you love better, Shadow Hunters or Arrow? I mean, or, that's, or or could you pick? That's like picking a favorite child. I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But honestly, I I will say that I'm eternally grateful to have been a part of both of these worlds that are have such amazing fandoms and such wonderful cast and crews and two characters that are are so different but equally these empowered women that um, have a journey and are flawed and, and they, their characters were so well taken care of by the writers during the course of the shows. And that's, you know, not a lot of folks get to have that in such a short amount of time in their career. And I, I just hope to continue that as I move forward. I have a strong feeling. Luke and, and Kat, can you talk about the Shadow Fam? What, what, what are they? Who are and, they? <laughs> and you, it's so funny. I remember watching like, actors get interviewed and talking about like fandoms and being like, okay, you don't actually care. Like, calm down. But <laughs> it's like an extended family. There are people who, you know, especially over the course of the pandemic, you know, I've been more active on social media and, and, and more engaged with that. And there are people that I, you know, I probably speak to more than I speak to my family. <laughs> so, you know, it's like there's... And, and they are so supportive. And as long as, you know, you treat them well, they'll treat you well. And, and they really do go above and beyond to, to care and support. And, and it's, it's really beautiful. And what's so good about the Shadow Fam is it, it goes beyond even us and the characters and the show. And, you know, on, in the world of social media that, that can run the gamut of effects and positive versus negative and, and the way in which it interacts with people, it is such a beautiful microcosm of people that just exude love and acceptance. And mm. you know, for a show that's about no matter what kind of blood runs through your veins or no matter who you are, it's the choices that you make that determine the kind of person that you are and whether you're a hero or a villain. And that is 100% what the Shadow Fam represents is come as you are, be who you are, and you will be loved for it. And just seeing these folks, I call them kids because they feel like, you know, our kids in a way, but over the course of the last, you know, five or six years that, that we've all been a part of this fandom, they've grown so much and they've made friends across countries. And you see this community blossoming and these people coming into their own and gaining so much confidence. And just to bear witness to that is, is the biggest gift. Isn't it amazing? The work that you do brings people together in such unique, unique, unique ways. Happy birthday, Luke. The fans were asking what you did for your birthday. I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers to you. Cheers to you. I, I, I am currently in Palm Springs. I ran away. Um, oh, I ran nice. away for a couple of days, which is why I keep having this horrible Wi-Fi. Um, but no, I, I was like, I was doing a movie in Alabama for three weeks as of, I was, I was shooting until I think 3.30 AM Sunday morning. And then I flew back, uh, Sunday did press all day on Monday. So Tuesday for my birthday, I jumped in the car, came down to Palm Springs and, uh, have been, have been trying to get some color, but I don't think it's working. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. Nick, before I let you all go, will you tell me about the worldwide premiere on June 12th? Yes, so it's a worldwide premiere on uh, this Saturday, June twelfth. Come, to, you go to the website untitledhorror.com. You can buy uh, a ticket. Uh, <laughs> anybody in the whole planet Earth can right down there um, can buy a ticket, I guess. And it's there's three different tiers: uh, bronze, silver, and gold. Um, the gold package there's like a red carpet, which is again a. I'll probably be in this exact same room um, <laughs> on a red carpet, probably, but you won't see it. Um, and we're going to do interviews. Uh, we have a host and then we're going to show the movie and then um, we're going to do like an hour long Q&A afterwards. So anywhere time. in the world, people can all watch simultaneously. Yes. And it will be up, I think, for 48 hours or so after we do the stream. So in case it's like, I think the it's like 6 a.m. somewhere, you know, while we're doing it at 1 p.m. in L.A. Um, and then uh, ends up being... Uh, yeah, so it'll be up, up for like 48 hours. Sorry, I had a phone call coming at the same time just now. <laughs> so I'm like, ah. so make sure it doesn't ring. That's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah it sounds it, like a great. We're using this really cool platform that has been used for like Coachella and Katy Perry and like a bunch of huge acts. And it, it, it has the ability to chat with your friends. You can also do like a live watch function. So the film will appear in like the main box, but alongside it, you can have all of your friends right, simultaneously right. with you. We have like a photo booth. You can, you know, take a photo and upload it with the Untitled Horror background. Um, and so it's like we were just trying to create more of an event out of it. And as going back to what you're asking about with the, the Shadowhunter fandom, it's like people want people don't want to be excluded from something, especially on an international level. So we wanted to make sure that it would be released the same day at the same time. And no matter who you are in the world, you can watch it and also interact with us. So it's again, the movie was an experiment. The live stream premiere is an experiment. I, I don't think anyone's done anything like what we're trying to do with this, um, but you know, hopefully it will work out. And there's also a cat. Now there's, you guys are doing like a one-on-one -on -one zoom with, with three winners, right? Um, for yeah. gold. Yes, yes. We're choosing um, on, on the night of the premiere, we're choosing three three lucky winners and they will get a one-on-one uh, -on -one Zoom with the cast. With the cast. Program. With the cast. Uh, how do they enter? Is it on the website? Yeah, on you're Colorado automatically Colorado. entered if you bought a ticket. Yeah. yeah. Oh, anyone, wow. Anyone who's bought a ticket is entered. Yeah. Yeah. That is it, amazing. It will certainly make for an entertaining Zoom call because, <laughs> you know, it's going to be this, you know, one, like three fans, but one at a time. And they basically will be in this Zoom with, with all of us. And I don't know what's going to happen. I, I assume that like a cat will probably try and like ask questions, make it have some kind of structure. Claire will probably be running after. I, I, I think he's giving you instructions. <laughs> I think that's your hint right now. Yeah. So. It, it sounds very much like when they called me and said, hey, we wrote a script. We think we can shoot this movie on Zoom and you're doing it. And I was like, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I didn't know what you You actually asked though, can I, can I read the script first? And we're like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, sure, but can I, what are we no. doing? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, my other favorite thing is Tim would say, like, I, 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 I can do it probably, but um, can I keep my mustache? And we're like, why? Yeah, of course. I mean, we we're going to probably write about it. Yeah. I truly couldn't imagine the movie without Tim's mustache. It's pivotal. Oh, it's a great, yeah. It's, it, it's great. I love that. That was. It did take him a year to grow that too. So it's, it's very important. Was it for a role? No, he wanted to know. It wasn't. It didn't take him a year to grow. It took him. Uh, he wanted to keep it. Uh, uh, he started growing it right during lockdown. Like right when we started writing the script, he started growing the mustache because again, everybody thought lockdown was going to be over by like July. So he was like, "Look, I want to keep this mustache because I want to keep it throughout the lockdown." It was like his lockdown stash or something. I don't know. And and, uh, and somebody targets his mustache in the movie, right? I think everybody does, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I remember that immensely yeah. Yeah. don um for those watching emmy ryland from guiding light and general hospital is don's beautiful wife please tell her i said hello yes how yes. are your how are your three adorable children doing they are actually doing well jackson graduates mm -hmm. from elementary school this weekend so we're getting ready for that um trying to figure out what to do with them over the summer <laughs> <laughs> Make a movie. Thing. Yeah, I was just uh, gonna say a filmmaker. Yeah, you you know, an an Here, she's, she's, an been an <laughs> she's been she's been listening like a creeper in the background. Oh, oh hi, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> I just kept Dakota quiet for that entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> just want you guys to know how hard I was working over there. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Much. you guys did such an amazing job. It was Dakota really fun to like get you. to watch all the footage and see what you guys created. It was like the amount of times I would say to Don, like, okay, but what does anything <laughs> we are out with this? <laughs> yeah. Because she knows, right? She knows, like, even what she's watching, a lot of it's not my fault. So she has, like Claire is for you, Luke, and has yeah. no problems watching a scene and going, uh, no, <laughs> like, that can't be the movie. Like, <laughs> like when it goes, like, oh, you got to cut that out. Yeah. Um, I will also be like, Don, you need a better angle of her. <laughs> I got all the girls' backs. Oh, you've got the it's girls' good. backs. No, no, but in all seriousness, it was it was a phenomenal feat that you guys created. It was amazing. Like I would just keep going, she's alone. 
in her bedroom. <laughs> I need to speak to her right now in person. Movie and magic. Really good. <laughs> really good. And then really Luke, good. I think I told you, uh, she also, she coaches with Leslie Kahn. So when Leslie popped up on the screen, she was like, oh my gosh. I was so excited. Yeah, we didn't we didn't mention that on on camera. They they reference an acting coach in the movie, and she is a real life coach to yeah, Emmy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she's amazing. I think she's one of the best, and I think that like her in this movie is funny because she had um, a direct messaged me on Instagram before the before she had seen the movie, and she was like, "Am I bad?" <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love this. I love this. Is so, the, how the roles have reversed. <laughs> oh, oh, it's scary, isn't it, Leslie? <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I could have watched her for hours. Me too. Yeah. He was, hey, honestly, Emmy, would you love to do something like this project? Uh, uh, and now we have a special oh. guest. Oh, hi, hi Dakota. <laughs> Guys, you have no idea. Like. <laughs> Like what's happening? The feat that I just created by keeping her in one room for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, I, yes. It, I, I, I heard a little bits as I was listening and just talking about actors wanting to rise to challenges, and so of course it's really fun. But it was really fun to watch you guys crush it. So <laughs> oh, totally, totally agree. Yay. Well, guys, thank you so much no, for being thank you. here. Thank you for having us. This has been fun. Oh, dude, this so, has been so awesome. I'm so glad you emailed me way back when. Well, was, that, that article was so intriguing. And what a great article. I mean, that article came out when you probably just Yeah, yeah Nick, he's talking about Vanity Fair. Vanity. Yeah. It right after we shot, right? Yeah, we just yeah. finished shooting that movie. Yeah, we just finished shooting. Uh, I think we had maybe one cut of the film almost done, the first cut. Um, and then the Vanity Fair article came out, yeah. Yeah, and I saw Don post it, and I just thought, what a clever, clever idea. And now to see the finished product. Thank you. I, I, can't, I can't wait to – I think people are going to really – I mean, we haven't had a fun, you know, horror comedy like this in a while. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We're really yeah. excited. Well, have a great time. Is it Saturday night, right? Saturday, yeah, yeah, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Well, it depends on where you're at, right? Yeah. It could be Saturday yeah. night. It could be <laughs> right. Saturday it could be Sunday morning. It could be Sunday it could morning. Be Sunday in Australia. And then it'll, yeah. be out, uh, it'll be out on digital after that. On, on June 15th. Yeah. June 15th. Everybody check it out. Yeah. Untitled Horror Project. Nick Simon, Luke Baines, Catherine McNamara, and Don, my friend. Thank you for setting this up. Thank, thank you. you. Everybody ha fun. have a great day. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. And Luke, and go enjoy your birthday. Oh, you know I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Don't forget, untitledhorror.com. Check it out. Join them on June 12th for the premiere and June 15th everywhere else. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. R turn on notifications and get reminded of all upcoming shows. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye.